please make sure you have a copy of today's assessment, the calorimetry lab practical. An assessment is a test. This is expected to be done individually, and you'll have a choice of two different problems that you can work on. We'll begin the planning stages today, and on Thursday and Friday, you can spend time during class working on completion. So I'll go through first what are the two problems, and make sure that you're looking at what evidence is going to be expected. There'll be a separate report form that you'll turn in for whichever problem you choose to do. On the back of this page is some space for you to do some work uh, planning, recording data. This is like your sloppy copy where you can do some work uh, that then you can put onto the final report form. There are two problems. One is called ice cream calorimetry, and the second one has to do with the effectiveness a reflective emergency blankets. We'll go through each one and I'm gonna go through some steps. I'm gonna demonstrate things to think about when planning your procedures for each experiment. I'm not telling you the procedures though. I want you to pay close attention and think about what are the quantities that you're trying to measure so that you can plan accordingly. Okay, so let's look at the first one. This first one, we're going to use a calorimeter to measure the mass of a scoop of ice cream and compare it to the actual mass that you get when you measure it on the balance. So we'll check the accuracy of using a calorimeter to find an unknown quantity. So here are some of the things that you'll want to think about when doing your procedures. There are several pieces of data that you need to collect so that you can fill in a data diagram like this and then use the data to do a calculation. So. I'm going to make some cocoa. I'm going to put my cup here on the balance because I want to know what's the mass of the liquid part of the cocoa because that's the hot part that's going to exchange heat with some cold ice cream. So there'll be a source of hot water. I'll have a hot pot with some hot water that you can use. You need to just make yourself about a half a cup of cocoa. I'll just make a little bit more and give that a good mix. So if you're using the balance, you can make measurements to find out what's the mass of the watery part, the cocoa part, that's in the cup. There's just one little calculation you have to do to find that out. So that's what the balance will be for. And there'll also be a thermometer. Now one of the things that you'll need to know is the temperature uh, of the calorimeter before you add anything to it that would exchange heat. And when you add something to exchange heat, it's going to be a scoop of, of uh, ice cream. Look at that flavor. Mmm, my favorite. All right, so I'm going to add a scoop of ice cream. I want to know the mass of ice cream that I'm adding so that I can check at the end to see how accurate my calculation result was. So I'm adding that, and I'm going to let that melt until the temperature stops changing. I want to exchange as much heat as possible. You know, it's a good idea to keep any heat exchange with the room to a minimum by using a lid. Okay, and then when it's all done, I'll give you cleanup instructions. The measurements that you make, uh, you'll need to use to fill in a data diagram and do the calculations. All the materials will be food safe, so when you're done, this can be consumed. Mmm, that's good stuff. Okay, now let's look at the other experiment. Now in the second experiment, our goal is to find out about the effectiveness of reflective emergency blankets. These are plastic blankets that are coated with a metal foil. And according to the label, it says that you can uh, use this to reflect 90% of your body heat. So if you're in an emergency and, uh, and you need to wrap one of these around you, it'll keep you warm because it reflects back 90% of the heat that would otherwise be lost. We're going to test that claim to see if it's true. What you have available are two calorimeters. One of them is made using a layer of the, uh, the foil sandwiched between two cups, and the other one is just plain. And of course, there'll be some lids that you can use. And there's a timer, and there are a couple of thermometers, one for each calorimeter. I'll also provide ring stands for this uh, experiment so that you can hold the thermometers up without having to use your hands. And there's a graduated cylinder for measuring volume, or how much water you add to each one. So there'll be a source of hot water, as with the other experiment. 
and uh, you can add a certain amount of water to each of the two calorimeters. I would recommend that you uh, are doing this in a certain way. I'm not going to tell you how much to use, but the amount that you use is, is something that you want to give good consideration to. And so I'm going to use my thermometer to make a couple of measurements. I want to know how much heat is lost from each calorimeter over time. I can't measure heat using a thermometer, but I can measure the temperature change in the materials. So if I put the thermometers in, with the lids on of course, and let these sit over a long period of time using the timer, then I can look to see how does the temperature change over time and use that information to calculate how much heat was exchanged uh, with the calorimeter, how much heat was lost, and then compare to see whether or not this one lost more heat than this one, which is what you'd expect, and if the amount of heat, uh, the difference between them is what is claimed, a 90% uh, reflectivity of, of the heat loss. Okay, so that's the projects in a nutshell. What you'll need to do for each one, oops, looks like, like I got a little ice cream on there, mmm, good flavor. So what you'll need to do is I'm going to give you some blank reports and you'll fill out the reports uh, for your final product, but again you can use the back of the first page as your sloppy copy, do your work there, and uh, I'll give you diagrams uh, to fill in with any data or any procedures, and then make sure that you follow all of the steps and what you need to do. It tells you in each problem what needs to be completed for that, for that particular problem. Now, during class, I'm not going to answer any questions about this. I'm going to give you questions to your questions so that you have to find the answer. My job here is not to uh, tell you how to answer the questions, but to help you think it through on your own. So please don't expect any answers to questions. I'll just ask you questions in return. So spend some time today getting yourself uh, planned out, and then tomorrow we'll begin.